uh, the deep state's trying to zap us. I just got a, I got a text from a friend right now. This guy, you know, he's, a, he's another activist. He's not an election integrity activist, but he's an activist overall. And yeah. I just want to sh- read to you the stuff that I'm getting because, mm-hmm. you know, he made this statement, and this is really hard to grasp for election integrity activists. And just, I don't know, he said that, you know, generally the Democrats cheat in the primary, the Republicans cheat in the general. And I don't know what that means, David, but maybe you can testify that the Democrats have a coming to Jesus moment in the general election and decide that they're not going to cheat then. What are your thoughts to that and what happened in this last election? But really, really quick, I want you to listen to this because this is what I'm dealing with. And it's like from people I love and admire and stuff. And I, mm-hmm. and I, and I told them, I said, I said, I said, uh, my friend, this is just crazy. You have mathematical anomalies for votes in Wisconsin. Michigan, Pennsylvania. We have proprietary software that can be flipped at any time. We have multiple glitches, which really are what I think us catching the matrix, trying to flip votes. Uh, We have mathematical analysis from guys who follow pattern patterns like uh, uh, Dr. Shiva, who talk about uh, parabolic effects, which is a red flag for fraud and what's going on. Um, but when I wrote, wrote all this to him, and I said, and if you can really believe that Joe Biden got almost 7 million more votes than Barack Obama in his record, then that's really, I want to send you some land in the Everglades. Uh, but he said in Wishigan, in Wisconsin, in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, Republican legislators prevented counting of the mail-in ballots prior to the day of the elections. Mail-in ballots take a lot work to process than ballots cast in person. Biden was telling his supporters to vote by mail. Trump was telling his supporters to vote in person. Uh, That explains it very clearly. Moreover, Trump was telling everyone, even before the election, that going to court and claiming the election was rigged was his plan. Thing is, when you go to court, you actually have to show evidence. There is is none of that, and that's why it keeps losing in court. Uh, This is not like how it went down with Bernie. We have the evidence, overwhelming evidence, that Bernie was cheated. Uh, remember, de- Dem- Democratic Republicans are both two sides of the same coin. Their mutual objective is to prevent progressives from advancing as for a number of voters. Yeah, those are going to keep coming up because more and more young voters are, are aging in to vote than old people dying. Uh, and importantly, with this election, due to having the first election ever with a national mail-in voting, millions more were actually participating in the process. Well, we've always had mail-in, by the way. Uh, look, look at local elections. Uh, voter participation is the cup across the board. And no, Biden did not get more votes than Obama. Uh, we very well know the vast majority of his voters were voting against Trump. They love this one right here. There's a difference between uh, the takeaway from this election is that people uh, were rejecting fascism. Uh, I, I would say that Joe Biden is even more of a fascist. Uh, as far as the minorities voting for Trump, uh, taking that with a grain of salt because it was due to the extra, extra, extraordinary effort of the progressives, minorities, or poor people organizing that flip states like Arizona and Georgia. And also, let's give Tlaib and Omar some of the credit for organizing in Michigan and Wisconsin in their districts that helped carry those states. But hey, Craig, putting this election aside, I really don't want to argue with it. Either way, no matter who wins in the end, no one that I know and respect is going to be happy with the outcome. Instead, I would really like to see where and how we plan our next steps. Neoliberals uh, with the best, with at best, can't even split Congress, blah, blah, blah. Okay, um, pretty much he wants to talk about what we do moving forward uh, and just ignoring what happened in the election and the fraud and whatnot. Now, my point is, David, and Mr. Weber, who's with us, this is David Weber, by the way. If you don't know who David Weber is, you're going to get to know him because he's amazing. He's considered my ace in the hole, my ace in my pocket. Uh, he knows so much about the open source and the software, something you've been screaming about for 20 years, something I've been screaming about for four months, uh, four years, excuse me. Uh, he knows a lot about the, the voter rolls. Uh, he's actually had some work in improving these. We're going to get some answers from that. Uh, but David Weber, you see what's going on there. They're saying that it was a mail-in thing and that more mail-ins really help Democrats than Republicans, which I believe is, first of all, it's a false myth because in Wisconsin and Michigan, we have more Republicans request mail-in ballots than Democrats, but yet they want to sell us this falsy bill of goods. Your overall well, opinion about what happened in this election, David, and was it fair? Well, was it I, not fair? And walk us through it. Okay. Um, 
that you just read a whole lot of smoke screen and smoke bombs being thrown into the air there. Yeah. And who knows what, right? Yeah. Um, for me, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a computer scientist and, and uh, a scientist by training. So um, I, I, I look at the data, right? Yep. And, and, the, and the numbers. So for me, it's going to be super interesting come Wednesday, once they finish this manual hand count that they're currently doing. In Georgia? And yeah, I'm be, no, not, um, not in Georgia. It's Michigan? In, um, no, the other state. Um, Pennsylvania? No. Wisconsin? Um, <laughs> Arizona? Next to Arizona. Nevada? Is it Nevada? Yeah. They're, they're, they're doing the largest hand count ever done. Okay. And so you're going to be able to definitively compare what the hand count says compared to what the original computer systems, et cetera, et cetera, declared um, as the numbers and the result. If there's a big disparity, then that is going to throw the whole thing wide open. And clearly people are going to be saying, well, then we need to hand count, uh, you know, all of these key races. Um, and we've gotten to this situation over the past 15 years. And unfortunately, a lot of the activists pressed for the need to have the paper ballots, because uh, you remember, years ago, we were told, oh, it was all unnecessary and everything could be digital. Um, and, and the world would be fine. So at least we have these paper ballots. But I, I, the crucial thing that I see here is these mail-in ballots. Yeah. And this is, you are right, you know, obviously mail-in ballots have been around for a long while, but they've also been um, controlled and limited of use. Um, this has been the first election where you've got a shotgun approach to sending out millions of these mail-in ballots. Yeah. And so I look back at 10 years ago, um, we built, my small team built a, uh, a mail-in um, ballot system for the state of Virginia. Yeah. And it was used in three election cycles. And it was paid for by DODFAP. And they sponsored a number of projects in, I think, seven or eight states um, yeah. with the goal of showing that they could do reliable paper uh, um, mail-in ballot delivery for the overseas voters, primarily the military and the uh, embassy staff. Yeah. Keep going. I'm going to take notes so that we can go back and we can make sure that we can put in some articles. The fact that you've done this before, I think a lot of people have to take note that you've actually implemented a system because there yes. are people who are starting to look into this, David, and they have a lot of questions on how we get this right. So yes. in Virginia, just to make sure you actually implemented a system that was used, right? Yes, for three okay. election cycles, and it was all open source. The okay. entire thing... Um, the operating system, the database, the software was all entirely open source. Open source. Got yes. it. And um, so it was successful. Uh, we delivered uh, several thousand ballots um, in a secure way. And so I compare and contrast um, what, uh, what we did with that system compared to you know, uh, we see millions of mail-in ballots just being shotgun out to people yeah. with no controls. But isn't that um, fair, David, in a way? Let me just, I'm going to push back so people can understand because yes. there's the argument of that right away. For me, that was an immediate red flag. Shotgunning all these ballots out with these voter rolls that, we'll get to that in a second, that aren't necessarily mm -hmm. uh, up to date and accurate. Um, why isn't that fair for people who sometimes that go to the polls, you know, and in a situation like this, they don't want to because it's COVID and stuff. Why is that an immediate, like, kind of like red flag for you as an election integrity person 
why it can bring so many problems and let people understand that. Yes. Well, um, people can go and, and find the design that was done for DODF VAP for these mail-in ballots. And there was a whole workflow around ensuring that the person requesting, and you actually have to go in and request to get the ballot. Yes. And then they verify your information and then they notify you that here's the link to the download and you can go in and download the ballot, print it off, fill it out, mail it back. Got it. So now you've got multiple levels of trust and verification going on there, as you can see immediately. Right? Yeah. This is the system you worked with in Virginia or no? Or kind yes. of like it. Yes. Okay. Yes. No, I, I, logical. Th this was a this was a overall design that FBAP um, and DOD did to um, justify, you know, uh, because this was the first time it was being done. Yeah. We, uh, ballots, people being able to download them, print them off, yeah. and mail them in, making sure they get the correct ballot. Yes, but they had to go in in person and request it, location, right? The ballot's different. Yeah. But you're saying in um, your situation, they had to go in and request it in person to get that ballot. So we know that they had to once in person verify that ballot. Where did they go and verify? Where did they go in and fill that out to get that? that it was online and FAP have a form for that, which is okay. you used by the military and these overseas voters. Got it. And you verify all your information um, and you mail that in. And of course, we were doing that digitally because the whole premise here is for the military, these are people who are putting their lives on the line daily. Yeah. And they, they, are, they deserve to get their vote cast and counted more than anybody else. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and so there was n numerous, uh, we'll use the word glitches, right? Uh, people talk about the post uh, yeah. and the post office and getting the, mail, the ballots back in time to the election authorities back here in the States for them to be counted. So this is what we were all grappling with and, yeah, yeah. and verifying that, you know, this particular military voter was entitled to vote in this particular district. Okay. Got it. So all of that, all of those boxes were being checked and um, it, it worked. Um, and so you're in, you're in good shape. Uh, but compare and contrast that to what we did <laughs> um, to yeah. sending out millions of ballots just in a shotgun to mailboxes across a state with zero control. Yeah. Uh, you know, what, what the heck? Who knows who is getting those and what is happening to them? And, and there's no correlation one to one. I mean, the, the, the immediate thing that jumps out at me is that when you're print delivering these ballots, you know, we're all familiar with QR codes. Yeah. Amazon uses them, you know, et cetera. You can put a, a unique QR code on, so you're not necessarily identifying the voter, but you're at least identifying that this is a legitimate ballot that we have verified and delivered to the right person. And when it comes back in, we can check that QR code and make sure that somebody hasn't photocopied it and run off a thousand copies of it and sent in a thousand of them. So the QR right. code though, the QR code on the mail-in ballots they sent in, all that does is tell the, uh, I think the election officials what district it's in or something. In other well, words, no, it's not it, like a it, QR can, code that's used once and gotten rid of. It can be used yeah, multiple yeah. times. One time use. And, and it's just like, anything else that you're used to, you know, a banking transaction or whatever. Yeah. And it just tells you um, that this is a correct one. It, it's not being That's in your system. tampered or copied yeah. or whatever. That's in your system, right? That would be in my system. What was in the system that we have with these ballots right now, as far nothing. as nothing? The QR yeah. code just says where I think it says. No, no, there is no QR code. Okay. They're just. It's, it's exactly the same ballot as you would get if you went into your polling station and they handed it you and said, hey, fill this out. California does have QR codes in ours. It's a little bit different. I don't know what the QR code uh, okay. is. They right. said that 
they said the QR code just specifies which district you were voting in or something. Okay. Like that. Yeah. But I, I, I think in Michigan and yeah. Wisconsin, we I don't know if they have in the mail-in ballots if they have QR codes, but is it possible to have a QR code that really just doesn't do much? Correct. Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's number one thing that jumps out right at you. And, you know, when we hear of ballots being scanned over and over and over again, yeah. you, you know the QR code would immediately catch that and say, wait a minute, I've already got this one. Thank you very much. Give me another yeah. one. Yeah. So um, that, and, and this is all born out of the experience of people just saying, well, isn't it a great idea to send everybody a mail-in ballot? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I wind the clock back 10 years and say, well, when we pr proposed this for the military, everybody threw their arms up in horror and said, absolutely, you can't do this and put all these roadblocks in the way and caused us to spend all this money developing special software and special procedures. And lo and behold, that all gets thrown out the window and anybody can get one. Yeah. So um, there's, in terms of election integrity, you kind of scratch your head and go, oh my. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and so that's an issue right there. Yeah. Um, can, can you give some examples? I gave an example because I also want to talk about the companies that make the ballots. I learned something okay. from you just recently. You know, yes. I, I saw yeah. a lot of these companies. For instance, Los Angeles uses a company called K&H that's in Washington. Now, I don't mm -hmm. know why in Los Angeles, when we have so many companies around to print out a ballot, <laughs> why we would go all the way to Washington. But uh, this particular company is almost like uh, Dominion and ES and S in the sense that you really don't know who owns them. It's a subsidiary company of another zombie company of another company. However, what you explained to me, a company like K and H that we use in Los mm -hmm. Angeles and our tabulation machines and Smartmatic have to be compatible with each other because the Smartmatic machine will only take a ballot from K and H that is, is, is acceptable by the Smartmatic machine. So they have to work with each other somehow correct correct and this was another thing that we kind of broke the mold off when we did the system for virginia and the various other states because um this was a nice little money earner for these election companies producing these ballots and of course what we were doing um with the uh, the fap system is dynamically printing these ballots straight out of your printer Mm -hmm. So no, no third parties needed. The Got computer it. software rendered the ballot exactly as the state required. You eliminate the paper company. You eliminate them. That's great. That's a ton of money saved. Ton of money saved. Wow. <laughs> wow, David. No, no, no. I mean, the, the fact is, is like, we talk about the chain of custody. We talk about elections. How about eliminating the company that just prints the ballots that can print them out like confetti and it's connected in directly with the software and the machines we're using right there. We got to get that straight in a second. But what you're saying in your system, you eliminated the paper company. People just have to go print their own ballots and it's all yes. secure. Yep. And it's wow. computed. David, yep. uh, I'm having a moment, David. Ladies and gentlemen <laughs> out there, can you, see what he, David, can you see what he's saying right here? This man has created a system that eliminates the third party. And the more parties you have within the chain of custody, tell me true or false, Dave, the more chances of fraud you have. Well, and not only that, but uh, you so know, the true. software gives you <laughs> tremendous convenience because uh, I, we're going to get on to another subject here. The glitch. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, yeah. um, but wait, wait, before we talk to about the glitch, I just want to give a couple examples too of the shotgun of ballots, how it could be affected. In other words, K and H, the company that does Los Angeles, they mailed out ballots to everybody on the rolls, right? Now we mm -hmm. know the rolls, which we have to get into in a little bit too as well, might have a lot of people on it that might've been deceased, might've been moved. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. 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 So I, I, they send out I, I, all these ballots. Some of yeah. them come back. 
they can be yeah. distributed out to nefarious players, which then with ballot harvesting can be just walked right in, correct? I, you know, and without QR codes to verify, you're, you're obviously opening that whole can of worms up. But let me, let me go back to what, what I was going to say. Okay, I'm sorry for is, interrupting. You know, yeah. typ typically with any election, um, and, and we experienced this with three of the cycles in Virginia, um, things change. It, it, it's a very dynamic thing right up to the last minute because people are filing court cases saying, um, I need to be on the ballot or you didn't get my information correct, it needs to say this, or um, we're trying to get this proposition on the ballot, and judges are making, they're going to court, judges are making decisions, and they're coming back to the software folks and saying, oh, um, you know, last minute, this needs to be changed, quick, make it happen, right? So that's normal, that's to be expected. Yeah. This isn't like it's abnormal, a glitch, or anything yeah. else. This is 100% normal. So let me just so the beauty can of, I say something on that, David? I just want yeah. to explain, like, ladies and gentlemen, you understand, you watch the show, when people are trying to get a measure on the ballot or they're trying to, like, a person like Gloria Lariva, who I voted for, who was a third-party candidate, was fighting tooth and nail to the last legal day to get on the ballot, and therefore they might get on the ballot, which might cause a ripple effect of the – companies to change their ballots, but maybe they didn't. So go ahead and explain on that. Yeah. So um, one of the things that we did in that software and that open source approach was to build the entire ballot dynamically. So depending on what contest you were, um, whether you were voting for in the Senate race or the county race or the uh, whatever, it was all produced dynamically. So it was not an issue for us. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we got the updates, put them in, and, and uh, the software is ready to roll. Gotcha. So now fast forward to Pennsylvania and Dominion telling us that they had a glitch and the people didn't apply the right update. <laughs> so they had voting machines that were not using the right template for the ballot. And that caused um, races to be skewed because ballots were being counted incorrectly. So let's just think about um, that whole scenario. Mm -hmm. So um, if you can imagine, I'll, I'll just use my hand here. Um, if I put a race in here or a proposal in here, everything is now moved down one. Gotcha. Okay. Four becomes and if I'm five. Using the old yeah. yeah. So if I'm using the old definition, Republican just became Democrat, Democrat just became Republican, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Gotcha. So now we were told that this wasn't Dominion's fault and, and it was just human error and it's a glitch. And, and I'm looking at that as an election integrity person and saying, oh my goodness, they complain about the Chinese and back doors. And here is a gigantic ocean liner sized back door. Okay. Because what the software should be doing when these results are being tallied is it should be verifying the version of the ballot against the latest version number. And if it doesn't match, that's an error. A red flag pops up and somebody has to go and investigate and fix it. Yeah. And the fact that it was not doing that is a major issue. Yeah. And it's not a software glitch issue. Uh, it's not a, a human error glitch issue. It's a software design and integrity issue. So the programming issue is pretty much, they didn't program yes, it right. Absolutely, yeah. 100%. Yeah. And yeah. if you're looking for back doors, you just found one. Yeah. Because if I was of a malicious, malficent persuasion, hmm. I could decide, well, let me just make 5% or 7% or 8% of these ballot definitions that are being distributed across the state for voting um, this way. 
not that way. Yeah. yeah. And, and nobody's picking this up because it all looks kosher, but it's enough to skew the overall result by you know percentage points that somebody has calculated that they need to uh to get get what the result they want mm. so you have a back door there that is needs to be closed yeah and if they're telling you it, it's human error and it's not a software glitch then th there's a major issue okay so that was the discussion about the ballots the shotgun how they can be so messed up yep. uh, right here Pasta Jardula, Convo Couch, continuing our talk with our good friend, David Weber, uh, election integrity specialist is what I like to call him because he knows a lot about the game. He also is a programmer, correct? Uh, you're a computer scientist? Uh, you're yes, yes, all of the above. All the, uh, yeah, and, also, and more to the, more to the yeah. point, I worked for um, over 10 years on election software standards. Yes. So, you know, we were just talking about this issue with Dominion. Mm -hmm. and the ballot definitions. Gotcha. So um, the big picture from a voting integrity point of view is there needs to be one consistent set of standards that define these ballots for all these systems so that you can verify these things, that you yeah, yeah, can yeah. run tests, you can have test suites, you can have things that are checking, and we do. Um, yeah. And there is, you know, the machines have digital signatures on them, and they use those to in encrypt the results so that they're tamper resistant. So you know which machine produced these um, numbers and these voting figures. Yeah. Um, but clearly, um, there's some gaps in, in the way Dominion is implementing this. Yeah. And so, as you mentioned earlier, if they've got proprietary software, we have no way of going in and and verifying and 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 scrutinizing exactly what's going on in their system yeah david should they we can do, say whatever they want should we do this you have should, no way of of uh you know yeah. saying well wait a minute th there appears to be a problem here should we fix this federally um, should we do a fed i mean here's the thing what you're trying well, to say right now the, is that it has to be one uniform mail-in ballot or company or or machine and stuff well should no we get I, away from the states doing these things and get more to a federal level well, no, there's, there's multiple ways of approaching this. So the way what I was doing was working with not just the US, but um, EU, um, Australia, um, Singapore, uh, on developing one consistent standard that is global for what election ballot systems do, okay? Mm -hmm. And of course you have local variations, that's fine. But overall, you want them to be um, following uh, the, the standards. And we di actually did a demo where we went to London and we had IBM, we had company from Belgium, we had folks from the UK um, uh, and folks here from the US. And we did a mock election uh, and combined all the results and they were tabulated on the IBM system. Um, and this showed you had interoperability. So you could, you know, from an election point of view, you want the, the, it to be plug and play and you want to be able to source components and know that it's consistent. Yeah. Uh, and if, you know, the number seven means that this is uh, a, 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 a vote for candidate XYZ on this ballot, it's the same across all the voting machines and, and et cetera. Gotcha. So, um, so that, that's that work, and NIST have been doing work on that. Um, but, you know, the, and, the, and some of the uh, um, election vendors, and Dominion actually happened to be one of them, mm -hmm. uh, have actually participated in this work too. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's a mixed bag, but, um, you know, the overall, what, what we've been saying from the open source stance and the open source community is what makes sense is for the states themselves to get together. And so we were trying, you know, when we did that work for Virginia, we thought, oh, great, we'll have, uh, you know, West Virginia, Maryland, um, Delaware, um, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, all participate. They can all contribute to 
the cost of, of doing further development and then just have their own folks take the open source because it's open source, right? It doesn't, yeah, it's not yeah. owned by anybody yeah. and, and use it and start using it. Yeah. So of course, you know, Microsoft um, <laughs> uh -oh. did. Uh-oh. You said <laughs> that this was not a good idea. <laughs> not a great idea. Of course, my, Microsoft, you wouldn't say. Here we go. And um, so they came in and forced the state of Virginia, uh, essentially, to replace the system that we put in place. And so that ended there. There you go. So all your good work went down the drain. Let's... Well, not entirely. I mean, well, it, it's always very satisfying to get these projects in place. Yes. And, you, know, you see vestiges of it um today in the systems because they you know they never throw away good work they always copy it yes and and so at least you have that satisfaction um but once again you've got closed software instead of open software yeah and Can we discuss this a little bit i want to talk yeah, a little yeah. bit since we're on this let's stay on the software right now because we've been yelling this for years for me this has been the biggest thing a lot of people in the community I know the there's election integrity activists that are just against computers whatsoever. They want to throw them away. They think the computers are going to fly away and they want to go to just hand counting. Now I say, listen, if, if we're going to have proprietary software, I'd rather hand count, but we can do both if we have an open source software. But let's talk about the proprietary software and what's going on right now. We watched Dr. Shiva's video the other day. Uh, and he talks about looking about parabolic effects. I want you to talk a little bit about what could be done with the software in comparison to what I've been talking about, the patterns of voting. The way voting comes in is usually a pattern. It might deviate a little bit out there, but these crazy spikes of 138,000 votes or 115,000 votes, and, you know, I mean, the, the establishment, when they're going to call a election for Joe Biden against Bernie Sanders, and they call Michigan at 54% when Bernie's 100,000 down, and people say, what are you doing? There's still people in line. How can you do this? They use the science of like, no, that pattern's coming in. It, it won't deviate away from there, so we can honestly call Joe Biden, Joe Biden now. But in Wis w uh, Michigan, Michigan and Wisconsin, they let this sucker go to 90-something odd percent with abnormal uh, uh, amounts of leads that were flipped. Explain the pattern and maybe the software, what can be done if it's proprietary? Because everybody's on this hammer and scorecard thing now, which to me is just another form of vote flipping that's been around anyways. Give us a little bit of unpacking about the pattern of voting and the software and how it can be manipulated. Yeah, I, I, I mean, so in addition to shotgunning out the, um, the, 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 the ballots, yeah. uh, the mail-in ballots, the other huge issue that you've got is all this early voting and the free availability of uh, the electoral rolls. Now, years ago, again, uh, we didn't have early voting and then people decided that was a good idea, so everybody did it. And we mm. said from the election integrity to point of view, okay, but you're not addressing the potential issues that this raises which is what you're talking about, which is that people can now see what the trends are in the early voting, and therefore they can decide, oh, well, we, we need X, Y, Z to compensate. Exactly. <laughs> you're hitting a good point here. Bike. Yeah. And then yeah. Uh, we, we used to have, you know, the electoral rolls were very sacrosanct. I mean, when we did that Virginia system, those mail-in ballots, we had to hand load those onto the computer that was doing the ballot delivery. And there was like 5.6 million um, addresses. And, you know, we had to swear on our firstborn and, and give blood samples <laughs> to, uh, to get those records. And it took us three and a half days um, working through the night to get it loaded onto our system because they had anomalies in the data that caused the, the load to crash. And so I was literally getting up at three o'clock in the morning and going, oh, oh, that last batch didn't load. Uh, it stopped at record 173,121. Bring that up in the editor. Oh, blimey, somebody put 
quotes or a dash or an asterisk in there where they shouldn't have, fix that, restart the run, off we go again, right? For three yep. days. Jeez. Well, now um, all kinds of marketing companies and um, uh, uh, election uh, support organizations that are working with the, uh, the candidates and their teams have access to these electoral rolls. And, the, you know, and, and I, I remember in the past, the FBI actually arresting people and charging people for attempting to sell these roles. Um, and, and in one case, I believe it was to a Chinese organization. And, and you know, so we've lost that too. And so how does this play in? Well, you've got the, the, the triple um, whammy here coming. You've got early voting. Yeah. You've got mail-in ballots. Yeah. And you've got wide availability of the electoral roll. And so if I can mesh those three things, I can go back and go, well, you know what? I know from the poll book records exactly who voted when the polls closed. So now I can see who's not voted and I can send mail-in ballots to them uh, happily. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of election integrity issues here. Yeah. Um, and Would you and agree that early counting is early fraud? It just gives people the playbook to areas, you know, oh, I mean, well, it, early counting. Yeah, I mean, your... every state is different. Some of them are bringing the, the votes in and not counting them. Some are counting them, right? Yeah. Um, but it's how, what's the integrity? Again, who has access to those records? Um, and so that's the critical factor. If somebody yeah. can get access to those, that is a major issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a major yeah. issue. So, so, yeah, um, go ahead. It, I was going to ask another question, but go ahead. Yeah. So um, here we are, um, and you know, uh, uh, us in uh, in this electoral integrity um, community, have, uh, as I say, we've been working this fifteen plus years, um, and here we are at this point, going, well, we're not at all surprised. Not at all. And yeah. and you've you've been ignoring what we've been saying. And now you throw all of these other things into the mix with the early voting, the mail-in ballots, and oh. the av wide availability of the uh, electoral rolls. Um, and and you've, you've created a, you know, something that these systems that you have in place are not designed to cope with. And we're seeing the fallout and the impact of that. Okay. Which is why I said, you know, earlier, it's going to be super interesting when they do that manual count yeah yeah it's over five million records that they're counting um and they're going to be done by wednesday how that stacks up to what the digital systems were saying was the result that they called in the first place yeah so talk about the voting patterns because you've followed yep. a lot of elections and this is something that a lot of people can't grasp their head like i was saying about the 90 percent and how they justify calling a race at 54 percent. can you explain a little bit how voting yes, patterns yes. go and Yep, yep, yep. So, I mean, uh, we're looking at percentages here and saying, you know, um, so far, 56% of people have voted this way and 42% have voted that way. And this has a, you know, 100,000 lead. So if that same pattern continues with the rest of the, uh, the ballots, um, then there's, you know, there's no way that this is going to change, be able to change the um, uh, election yeah. result and the outcome. Um, and, and we have fun things because I remember it was back in the Bush era, um, up in um, the Northeast, there was an election where um, it was midnight and the result was X, Y, Z. And what was amazing was that the digital uh, results hadn't been tallied and brought in. And you'd think it would be the reverse, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, 
the counties that were counting by hand with paper ballots would be still counting and the, and digital then the digitals ones would be in quickly. Yeah. And lo and behold, um, the digital records came in with a 17% shift in the balloting trend, and that reversed the election at that point. Does this sound familiar? Uh, it, it sounded like what happened the other day. <laughs> it sounded, <laughs> and, well, and here's the here's the double whammy. Here's the good bit. So a lot of these states with these digital systems, they said they've enacted laws where they say um, if it's within five percent of a result, so the you know the the, the total ballots are within five percent then we need to do an audit and we need to do, you know, look at things to make sure that the result will stand. So what that tells somebody that um, is looking at this is if you're going to cheat, if you're going to, you know, go out there, make sure you cheat big because that way they won't check it. It's a 5%. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we also laughed at the I fact. Blown David. away when I saw that coming to law. I was like, Oh wow. That really encourages people not to cheat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, David, we were laughing about this because in 2016, right. We, yeah. it, it appeared that Hillary had cheated the primary. There was a lot of foos gaziness going on there mathematical anomalies, closing down polling stations, purging people from the rolls, all this crap that went on. We, we were screaming foul, but she took it for granted. It didn't cheat in the general and Trump won. This time right. it was like, oh no. And it seems like they overcompensated this time to make sure they have that outside that 5% lead so they won't get audited. Um, my question to you is, David, what mm. is the sample side that is needed to keep on that pattern? Like I said, they called Michigan for Biden against Bernie Sanders at 54%, but at 59%, Donald Trump had three times the lead, and they let it go until they can either flip that computer switch or get those numbers in. That's my personal opinion. But what sample size is good before they can say, oh, no, there's no catch-up well, going on? The, yeah. I, I mean, the, the, the mathematicians have this all down to a science. They really yeah. do. Um, so it's hard to say. I mean, uh, it's not a, a particular specialty of, uh, that I have of, of crunching those numbers. Um, but clearly people do. Um, and, I, and I think what you're seeing is what we're talking about, you know, here is that this, this is a different ballgame. Um, whereas in the past, you were calling those numbers because you knew how many ballots have been cast and how many more you had to count. Uh, with these mail-in ballots, all bets are off. So yeah. if they were saying 97%, it was probably the ones that they knew about that had been cast, right, on yeah. by, by election day. But they had outliers of hundreds of thousands of ballots um, that were mail-in. And so um, you've got this situation where all bets are off because you don't know what the hell's happening there. How many are you going to yeah. get back in? Right? Yeah. 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 Um, and, and so the whole thing um, puts you into this situation, as I said before, where um, it, it's a whole new ball game and the software just isn't prepped and, and configured to deal with this. Yeah. 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 Um, can so, we talk about the software a little bit? Like, because everybody's sure. on this whole thing about hammer and scorecard, which to me, when I heard about it, is just like another form of a flipping algorithm piece of mechanism that they put inside these computers. And I've been also told it's not just Dominion, ES&S can do it, Smartmatic can do it. In other words, all the major vendors that control 99.9% .9 of the tabulation mm -hmm. in the United States can have these mechanisms in there that can, ha can force these algorithms because even our votes are tabulated in metrics in the computer and we can just see, and we've saw from some of these computer analysts or these, excuse me, these pattern analysis, which they talk about uh, parabolic effects, which are red flags that just show these things going off yeah. the chart. And they're saying that this is software coded stuff to actually flip votes. What are your thoughts on that? Well, and um, hammer and scorecard well, as well. I think the, you know the 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 thing the thing that uh, 
was for me was was just wow that wow moment was the the lady in in michigan who uh, you know she's a republican um uh, uh worker yeah she was looking at the results for her district which is pre predominantly republican republican yeah and so, you know, as you say, they have the parabolics, they have the historical voting records, and she knew that, you know, over the last three election cycles, 85% of her constituents had voted Republican. Yeah. And suddenly she was seeing that 65% had voted um, Democrat. Yeah. And she said, <laughs> no, 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 this is impossible. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was her raising that that then calls dominion to come back and and look at it and go oh we're sorry it was a human error glitch glitch this is what we were talking about glitch yeah that where the ballot definition hadn't been updated so you had that gating <clears throat> you know yeah. where six was counting as seven seven was counting as eight and so on on the ballot definition yeah and and causing the tabulation to be in error yeah well that's all fine and dandy, um, but what we fail to find out is where else that has happened. And you know, it comes back to my point that if the software itself is not checking the versions of the ballots to make sure that the latest version is being used, this is a giant back door that's sitting there. Yeah, yeah. So whether whether it was done by mistake or whether it's being exploited intentionally, who knows? And yeah. if you were exploiting it intentionally, then yes, you could play the game of, of warping those ballot definitions in close races, um, where it would be really, really hard to know, you know, that in, in, in that Republican lady's case, it was obvious, right? Yeah. Stuck out like a sore thumb. Um, but if you imagine, uh, a hotly contested area and you've taken out of the hundred voting machines that are in that area you've put this alternate definition on 10 or 15 of them which is enough to skew five percent of the votes which is enough to get your man over the finish line yeah um how the hell would you detect that yeah especially if it's not open source and it's a proprietary software yeah, we yeah. can't even uh, look uh, inside uh, absolutely yeah yeah and if you're not if you're not able to get hold of those digital records and be able to verify what ballot template was being used on the voting machine, yes, you can use the digital signature and everything else. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's a, the, the, and these are the issues that we're seeing because we're not having open source software that's being managed by the states themselves, yeah. by the election authorities. Yeah. Um, and where they are doing that, you know, you, you have a much greater confidence, of course. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not a, you know, it's not a private company doing this. It's uh, state employees and, um, and all of that good stuff. Um, so, yeah, there's, yeah. there's, uh, what there's about, a lot of questions that yeah. this brings up. And I'm, what I'm yeah. hoping is that overall people will realize, oh, my goodness, um, you know, the activists have been talking this up for 15 years. Yeah. But now, finally, we're, we're, we're seeing this in spades. And, and we really ought to do something about it. Yeah. And yeah. not, you know, the, the, it, Einstein said, you know, the, the height of insanity is just to keep doing the same thing and expecting different and, results. And expecting yeah. a different result. Yeah. It's terrible. But what about, what about the fraction magic that Bev Harris talked about? What about this hammer and scorecard? Uh, since it is a proprietary software, you know, there, there was a general who came out or somebody in the Air Force who said that Obama used it in Florida, a hammer mm. and scorecard. And a lot of people have been saying that Biden used it in this particular election where they, it's very much similar to what Bev Harris talked about and Benny, Benny Smith about the fraction magic, the way you, you program the software to never let your the guy you want to win get below a certain percentage and the guy you want to lose never get above a certain percentage. Is all mm. this really going on? And tell us the capability of it. <laughs> 
Well, I, you know, I can't get into all of that. Um, yeah. you, you'd need to get hold of these computer systems. And, and the, the, the problem is that, you know, you, you're fighting that same battle, um, that it's all proprietary. You can't get hold of it because they'll block you with lawsuits. Yeah. Um, and, and that's the vast difference between having open source software. Um, I, I want to bring up a bigger picture on this as well. Please do. So this has put the US under a, a microscope and our voting systems and not in a good way. And, you know, I, as I say, I've worked internationally um, and my hope when I was doing all that work was that we could develop for the US the gold standard. Um, and we could have, you know, we're the, the premier democracy and we have the premier democratic software solutions. So if you take those software solutions and you run an election in somewhere like Zimbabwe or North Korea yeah. or, <laughs> or Russia, gotcha. That, yeah. that you actually have a real democratic election and the, and the voters can go, oh my God, wow, thank you, thank you, thank you, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but right now, we're looking, you know, as bad as, as those guys. Yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 and everybody's going, oh, yeah, well, yeah, we see how it is. <laughs> um, so we need, to, we need to hit a reset button in a big way, in my opinion. Yeah. And it would be wonderful um, to be able to do that um, and to get the funding and the resources because it's not through for lack of knowledge and lack of ability and lack of engineering uh, know-how in what we need to do to establish that. It, it's all because of the politics and the um, contracting and the, let's give this to this mom and pop organization and we owe this kickback to so-and-so, we're, so we're gonna give it to them. Or Microsoft comes in like they did in Virginia um, and got the CFO to give them a statewide contract to build software, and so we couldn't have our software anymore. You know, all this gaming is going on, and um, that's the frustration. I mean, this is the depression point that you were in. But, you know, I am it's depressed, like man, this is terrible, David. Language. David, yeah. this is terrible. We have proprietary software. Like you said, we can't even get in to see this stuff. You know, you know the capabilities, but we'll never know because we're not allowed to look in our own elections. You talked about the shotgun of mail-in ballots and how these mail-in ballots are just not secure and it's ridiculous they can get about. Could we talk about a second about the voter rolls briefly? Because sure. I think a lot of people yeah. okay. talk about these voter rolls and, you know, there's a, there's a group of people out there that are saying that the Republicans cheat by purging people from the voter rolls uh, and that they did it again, that if they didn't purge so many people this time, that Biden would have won by even a greater number. <laughs> However, we look at these voter rolls and they are dirty yeah. as far as people who have moved on, people who have, uh, who right, have passed right, away right. and whatnot. Can you well, explain to us uh, a little bit is, about the voter rolls? Well, so this is why when we did that FBAP system for Virginia, yeah. You, you actually had to physically fill in a request and that was then sent to the election board and they could verify, yes, this guy was, you know, on Norfolk um, Naval Base. Right now he's in Germany, but his residence is in Norfolk and therefore he's entitled to vote in this ballot race. Right? Mm -hmm. And he's still in the military. He hasn't, you know, been decommissioned or whatever. Um, but my, my sense is that these election rolls, I mean, uh, the, each state has these what they call poll book systems. And you've seen these when you go to vote, you know, they look you up yep. uh, and, and they check off that you've got your ballot and everything else. And, and to me, it, it seems like, no, uh, I, I mean, the, the, if you look at people getting married, divorced, um, moving house every seven years on average. You know, you've got this thrash um, constantly going on of people coming in and out of your state. And, and so at the end of the day, it's all going to be a wash. 
Um, yeah. And you and mean when they take so, people off? When they purge take people. people off, they add other people on. You know, people are coming in and casting provisional ballots um, because they haven't had time to get um, onto the onto the roll, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. So to me, and and how many how many thousand are we talking about? You know, if it comes down to it, yes, it might could possibly if the election is really tight and you're talking about a few hundred hundred votes, but at the end of the day. It's not like it's a Democrat or Republic or a Republican or a liberal or a green candidate thing. It, it, everybody's getting, you know, a fair crack at that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It yeah. affects everybody equally. How do we fix it? Do we just have automatic voter registration when you're 18 or do you have another suggestion? Um, no. Oh, uh, <laughs> Is that another story? I'm sorry. Yes, I do. Um, <laughs> You know, I've I've been I've been doing software forty years. Well, yeah, another yeah. one of my pet peeves. Um, back in the dot com era, uh, we proposed to the post office that they should do change of address, right? Yeah. And unfortunately, we were about to get a contract and do it for them, right? Properly. Yeah. Um. So lo and behold, of course, the dot com bubble burst, <laughs> and and that all went down. Uh, in in flames, and the post office ended up with the system that they've got right now for change of address, which is half-assed. Yeah. Um. And and really not that useful, but that's what we should be having, where you have a central system where you can manage your own change of address, um, and and it notifies the election board and the motor vehicle department and your bank and the post office and you know and everybody's on the same sheet of music yeah <laughs> but oh my god no that would be too obvious and too sensible and you know why the hell would you do that <laughs> well thank you so much dave for talking about this stuff this stuff is great um you know we gotta have to have more conversations i think we covered a lot what we wanted to cover today we covered the voter rolls and we have to get them straightened somehow because once again that's uh it is what it is the mail-in ballots the shotgun of mail-in ballots even i caught on to this i'm like wow these things are not really secure and they just give them to anybody and there's so many ways and especially with ballot harvesting me or you can show up with 138,390 yeah. ballots in Michigan at 4 a.m. in the morning. And, uh, yeah, and especially if you have the electoral roll, so you know exactly where exactly. You know, people are, that you can go and harvest their ballots. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So anyway, we talked about that. So, yeah. I, you know, I'm sorry I don't have a smoking gun or a, you know, putting my finger exactly on, but it is going to be interesting over the next few weeks to see how this all continues to play out. Um, and, and despite, you know, all the protestations and uh, DHS coming out and saying, oh, this is the most secure um, election ever, and, and the EAC saying, oh, yes, we've certified all these systems, um, yeah. you can see clearly with what just the little one uh, thing that we've uncovered with the Dominion software about their lack of uh, integrity checking, um, that you can drive a, you know, as we say, a double decker bus through that one. <laughs> yeah. No, I, people ask and, me, they're like, yeah. Pasta, as an election integrity activist, who was cheated more, worse? Was Bernie cheated more or, or was Trump cheated more? I said, this one here, I think, is one of the most. I, it's very simple. Oh. I tell you who's been cheated the most. Who's that? The American people, the American Thank you. voters. That's what I say, because I said, we yeah, don't have a system that's crazy. And you could we're spot this one with your it. eyes. Yeah, yeah we're, paying, we're paying massive amounts of money for this. I mean, I think it costs something like $50 per person to process your vote. It's ridiculous. And it is. Ridiculous. And, and, you know, go figure, right? They only charge you 15 bucks to renew your driver's license. So what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> So, David, quick fix. We have to get open source for the mail-in ballots uh, with secured uh, uh, barcodes that when somebody downloads a ballot, therefore it's not downloaded again or if they have to go through a certain process if they ruin that ballot. Um, make sure that, that we have open source software in our tabulation machines, eliminated ballot harvesting. Uh, is there anything else we can uh, add to this list that would fix these elections? Open standards. Uh, with, you know, for the election, uh, for these digital records and the ability to audit those, 
and then the states collaborating on getting open source software so they're not behoven to these uh, private companies. You yeah. know, it, it, it's all about jobs, uh, again, as usual, but it's not like these companies are going to be out of jobs. They can still, you still need people to manage the election software and everything else and do this, but it's just different when they're using open source and sharing that open source across four, five, six states. Um, and and uh, they're all singing off the same sheet of music. Yeah, yeah. We're going we're gonna to tag that link to anything you have of the work you did in Virginia as far as the mail-in ballots are concerned. I think people need to yeah, look into that. Can, yeah, people can find that with the DODF app um, and uh, they, can, they can see that project. Um, yeah. Eliminating the paper companies, the ballot making companies is, is amazing if we can print out our own ballots and be secure on it, not shotgun all these ballots out here, <laughs> which is a recipe for disaster. And it really did show its ugly face on November 3rd. Yep. David okay. Weber, thank you so much, brother. I really do appreciate talking. Can we talk some more about this? Because I'll probably be depressed in about five <laughs> days. <laughs> Send me some good pasta. <laughs> I will, sir. The vegan pasta. I'm and glad I you've gone vegan. Yeah, I did. And I heard you got some great tomato bisque soup there. When I get to uh, Washington, D.C., I, I got to taste somebody. I, uh, my, my wife's cooking is amazing. Well, mine She's too. We should share amazing. recipes, David. It's great talking to you. Yes. I'll okay. see you, my friend. Pasta Cardula from the Convo Couch. David Weber here talking about election integrity. Right now we're screwed. We got to get it straight. Combo out. We Bye, do. everybody.